So I have a video that guides you through all the settings for setting up PFSense in AJ mode, which is actually what we have here. And I wanted to do it this time because I did it with some virtual lab ones I had set up. This time I want to do it with some physical ones and point out that even the SG3100 or uh, the SG1100 can do full HA. Now, I was going to originally do it with this one. I just didn't happen to have two of them. Uh, as soon as we get them in stock, they seem to sell. Uh, people, we put a lot of these in, you know, people want us to configure them and things like that. But I did have a pair of 3100s, so I wanted to talk about the physical layer of how to set this up. And like I said, this is supported on all the NEC8 switches. It doesn't matter which ones you buy. Frequently when you're doing HA uh, outside of the lab, it's going to be on their higher end models and they sell a kit. And we just actually installed a kit in a data center um, for a client. They wanted PFSense, HA, seen the video, followed the video, and we then finished up the details to get a whole lot of VLANs and everything set up so it can work inside of uh, the data center in the rack. And it's a great system to how this works. But let's talk a little bit about the physical setup that we have here. So we have my uh, laptop that's gonna be plugged in behind the firewall. We have the Unify, I'm sorry, Ubiquity Edge Switch 10X right here. Uh, it's not configured anything more than just default. Uh, it doesn't need special configuration to make HA work. Uh, it's just that you do need this setup over here. We have port one going to port one on the Unify Edge Switch 10X, port one going to port two on the Unify 10X. They have to go to a common switch. Now I actually, this is my laptop here with this thin black cable, I plugged it into the edge switch because that would be proper failover. I could use the switch on these. The problem is if I use the bottom switch and the bottom switch were to fail, I would then lose access. If I'm using the bottom one then the top switch fails, I would still have access. So ideally you want both of these over here. They also need to communicate with each other because they have to know if the other one still exists. So that's an important aspect. This is all the LAN side right here. So this is using the four port switch on these NetGate SG3100s for the LAN side. We reuse the opt port. So the opt port uh, normally, which may be used for like a WAN2 or whatever you want to use it for, we have this set up as sync. And then here are the two WAN ports. And the two WAN ports are set up so that they feed right from this completely basic, uh, just open it, grab one out of the box, Netgear dumb switch this black cable feeds them. Now they also need to be in a switch for this configuration, either at the back end, or we're pretending our service provider only gives us one cable, so we have to put a switch in, because this one cable feeds me the IP addresses that we need uh, for this. So it's multiple IPs coming across one cable. You don't need anything special, like I said, I wanna point out that you don't need a managed switch for it. actually any of this, I just put one on the LAN side because it made more sense. Now, I do have, a map I'm going to show you here uh, right now. So that way I can show you the physical layout here, the layout and how it's set up inside of uh, like, you know, mapped out here. This is another way to look at it. And this is actually from that same video I did before uh, where we talk about having the sync port being a dedicated port between them or, de you know, whatever interface you want to dedicate to it. And that keeps the firewalls in sync with each other. So that's a very important aspect. Refer back to the video. To keep this video shorter, I'm not gonna go in depth on each one. Watch the other video if you want more in depth on the, how to sync works. But these are all the settings. So we have the master at 69.94 on the WAN, on the LAN side, 192.168.12. LAN side here, dot three, 69.81. But the VIP, the shared IP address, 192, I'm sorry, 172.16.69.20, and inside, on the LAN side, 192.168.11. So pretty basic setup that we have here. And what I wanted to do is show the failover in action, show it actually working and show what IP address my computer has and how I can still ping uh, both of the switches. So we're gonna set up a series of pings to make this work. So let me close all the windows that I have open and we'll jump into looking at the config a little bit more in depth. All right, we'll start here at the edge switch so you can kind of see what's going on. So ports one, two, and three are occupied, but when we go over here, like setting, just so you know, it's all default. Everything's just kind of the out of the box uh, configuration. I just happen to have the edge switch, that's why I'm using it. So um, it is better to have though on the LAN side, if you're ever gonna create VLANs, a managed switch, because you need a managed switch to properly handle the VLANs. Different video for that. So here is the secondary one, secondary PF sense. 
we can see all the IP address assignments, and this one is at dot three. And if we look at its cart failover status, it's in backup mode. So as long as it can see both of these, it's gonna be in backup mode. And then we'll look at this one here. We just set the theme to dark on this to kind of distinguish between them. So 172.16.94, 192.168.12, the sync port here. And if we go over here to status and we look at cart failover, this one's in master modes. So let's talk about the physical layer a little bit by looking at the pings. So at the top, you see me pinging 1.1. So I'm banging away at that one. Then we have the master at 1.2. And then we have 192.168. 1.3 as a secondary one. And now we're going to unplug one of these and show what happens. So because these share that VIP address of 192.168.11, that's what I'm pinging right now. So when I reach over and the plug I'm going to get rid of, so the main one is the top one, so we're going to take out the main, which will force the system into failover mode. So uh, we'll take this and uh, just unplug the port now. And we'll switch real quick over to here. And we can see it stopped pinging on the two, but three can keep pinging. And by the way, that quick without missing a beat, you know, in, I'll even plug it back in to show you here, uh, the failover was instantaneous. This is why the sync port was so important because it's constantly syncing all the connections and it says, all right. And as soon as it realizes that the other one is gone, the master is not in control of the network anymore. It immediately takes that shared IP and drops it. So you've watched it in real time. And uh, I know it's gonna be small, but you can watch me plug it back in and watch things come back up. So actually, we'll actually do this too. So this one's gonna fail because it's not there. This one will refresh the page because it's master. But by the way, please note it's only doing master on the 192.168.11 because I didn't unplug the master from uh, the other switch right here. So if we look at the other switch, this is the WAN feed. So actually we'll go ahead and this goes into master to WAN. We'll unplug that one too. So I'll hold it here. I'll pull this real quick and we'll just refresh the page. Oh, refresh. And you can see it's instantly master. And we'll, here, hopefully you hear that click. It's back in, refresh the page. It's gonna take, a, it does take a second to go back, but the fail over is immediately. It says, okay, hurry up and do this. It waits a few seconds for, there, for it to establish it back. And the same thing over here. Um, we're not pinging still. You can see destination unreachable. The pings are still going. And you should hear the click. It'll take a second because it's got a link established and do the same thing again. So we're gonna be a second before that works, but please note, we're not missing a beat on the main VIP, just like we want. So, you know, as far as the users go, there's nothing going on. It'll take a second, I'll refresh the page here. And it's probably just the edge switch waiting. So we'll actually refresh the page in the edge switch. Okay, it sees everything. I start to see some data go across. Refresh this page again. It's now in backup mode. Just took a second for the port to sync, but back to our uh, console over here. Here we are at the top. Dot one never misses a beat. And this is the important part. Now these don't work as a load balance. These are working completely as independent uh, of each other in terms of the secondary is doing nothing right now. So it's basically like a hot spare warm backup, however you want to phrase that. Uh, but the main is doing everything. That's why I took it out of the main. You'll notice nothing if you go and switch it away from the uh, backup one, because the, if the backup one is, it fails, it doesn't do anything. It's not handling. It only is ready to handle and keeping everything aligned, keeping all the states working, keeping uh, everything ready in case the master one fails. So it stays in backup mode. Uh, this is different. It's not like trying to sh uh, share the bandwidth between them or anything like that. It's just in a backup mode. Uh, but that's it. That's how the physical layer works for this. It's really quick. That, you know, quick click, but done. You now have uh, watched it fail over, watched it go right back in place, and it's that fast for the failover. And covering in the physical layer, I think is a little bit more interesting. Uh, that's why I did this. Uh, but if you want to know how all this gets configured, matter of fact, uh, one of my staff members who had not done an HA config, I had him watch my video and he built this off the video and 
I had to change nothing. So I was really happy he got it working right out of the box. As I like, I like when my videos get validated. Um, I try my best to make sure they're completely accurate, but then my staff sometimes will go through them uh, and they verified absolutely every step was followed and everything worked exactly as it did in a video. And once again, you can do this with some 3100s. If you got buy a pair of these NetGate uh, 1100s, you can do it. I did it and my original video was done in my lab with a series of virtual PF senses. Uh, it's supported in all the different PF sense ones. And my guide, um, like I said, go ahead and watch that video. I've got everything detailed out on exactly how to set this up. And thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.